Hi there, I am Dr. Zakir Hussain, Senior ENT Consultant. Today's video clip is about a condition called BPPP, Benign Paroxysmal Positional Vertigo, which is one of the commonest cause for peripheral vertigo. Let us go through that. So, before starting, I would like to brief about the anatomy of the ear. The ear is divided into three parts, external ear, middle ear and the inner ear. So the inner ear, it has got two functions. One is hearing and the one is balance. So the next, pic next picture is going to be about the inner ear. This is a picture of the inner ear. It has got an anterior part and a middle part and the posterior part. The anterior one is concerned about hearing and the middle and the posterior is concerned about balance. And the posterior one, as you see in this picture, you have got half rings which are called as semicircular canals. Depending upon the different plane, it is named as anterior, posterior and lateral. In this condition, the benign paroxysmal position vertigo, what actually happens is, you have small small crystals in the middle part of the inner ear. These crystals of calcium carbonate, which we call as autoconia, for the some reason or the other, which I am coming to, it falls into the rings called the semicircular canal. When it is in the semicircular canal, the, whenever the patient moves, like lying down on the bed or getting up or rolling on the bed, the patient gets a spinning motion. As you see in this moment, in this picture, in this video, whenever the patient moves, the autoconia also moves. So what are the common causes of this spinning motion in this condition? It can be trivial trauma or an accident, major accident or it can be viral infection in the inner ear or so many other causes. In 39% of the patient, you may not be getting any cause. What I mean to say, it can be idiopathic. So what are the complaints of the patient? Complaints of the patient. Most of the patients, they tell me, Doctor, when I lie down on the bed and when I get up from the bed, I get a sudden spinning sensation and I feel I am going to fall down. Then I ask him, okay, uh, how long does it last? Say a minute or so. Then what? Are you free of giddiness? He says, no, I have heavy headedness after that. So this is the most common complaints. So coming to the test, how do you diagnose? So before coming to a diagnosis, for the test, we have got some prerequisites for the test. The prerequisites are, the patient should not be taking the following three medications. One is beta histin, second one is cinerazine, and third one is antihistamines for past three days. In case the patient is taking any of these drugs, we need to stop it for three days, and on the fourth day, we need to subject him to the test. Why? Because all these medications are labeling than sedatives, so we will not be able to elicit the vertigo which we need. The second prerequisite is the patient should be free of any neck problems like his neck movement should be free. Suppose he has got a disc prolapse, cervical disc prolapse or any recent neck surgeries, especially orthopedic surgery or any severe spondylosis which restricts his neck movements, we will not be able to do the test properly. Third one is he should be free of any neck pain. The last one is warn the patient that when he do this test, he will have vertigo which can be severe and he may, he may be having vomiting too. Now coming to the test. This test is called Dix Halpite test. For that, you make the patient sit on the couch and this patient we are going to test on the right side. Right side. You make him turn his head to the right side 45 degrees and make him lie down on the couch with the head below the level of the bed that is approximately 30 degrees and wait in the position for one minute and observe for two things. One is he, the movement of the eyeballs which we call as nystagmus and the second one says he complains there is there is giddiness over time. That means his right side here is involved. If it happens to be negative then you do the go down to the go to the other side, other side here has to be tested. Now, 
Once we have come to a diagnosis, say suppose this patient has got a right side hip involvement, we go ahead and do the complete exercise and medication is not the treatment for this. We have to do the exercise and make the crystals come back from the semicircular canal to the middle part. This test which I am going to show in this video clip is named after Epley. So it's called Epley's manner which has five steps. One, you make the patient sit on the pouch, turn the head 45 degrees to the right side, the same side, that is first one. Second one, you make him lie down fast, same side, with the head 30 degrees below the pouch and maintain that position for one minute. Third, turn the head 90 degrees to the opposite side, again wait for another one minute. And the fourth, turn the whole body and the head looking downwards, eyes looking downwards on the floor. And the last step, make him sit up with the head flexed 20 degrees. He stays in each step, he stays for one minute. So we are, we are done with this exercise. So this exercise has to be repeated again, at least total of three times, at least. Some patients of mine, when they say I am completely clear with the second exercise, that's it. We stop with the second one. Now, we have some instructions to be followed after that. These instructions are, I tell my patients that for the next two days, please use two pillows. Second one is, try to avoid any dental procedures because the dental chair, it reclining and movement, it can induce what I And the last one is, to avoid any sudden head change head position changes like avoid sudden looking up, suddenly looking down or right to the left. In case somebody is calling him from behind, ask him to turn the whole body instead of turning their neck alone. Mind it, this is only for two days and not for the rest of the days. And one more important point, in this for these two days, suppose and he wants to pick up any object from the floor, you ask him to sit down then pick it up rather than bending the body over. That is a, these are the few instructions to be followed. So, to summarize, benign paroxysmal positional vertigo, we have seen that this is one of the common causes of peripheral vertigo and what is the, what is the cause for this, how do you test it and what is the treatment for it. And some doctors may ask for a blood test, like what is the value of vitamin D which is of recent importance. Thank you so much.